Welcome back Ceramics 2 students, it's Mrs. New here and we are going to be starting with our first project in clay. Now our first project in Ceramics 2 is the pinch pot set of three. So I want you to think back to Ceramics 1 when we very first started making rattles and cut top boxes and clay creatures we learned how to make basic pinch pots. Well now we're going to take our knowledge of a basic pinch pot and we're going to elevate it a little bit. We're going to make it a little bit more complex. Now the base requirement for this project is that you have a set of three pinch pots that display unity and variety. So what that means is that in some way they are uniform. For instance, these are all the same color, the same shape, but the variety comes in the stamp that they have. They all have a different textured stamp on the front. Um, you could also do what's called joined pinch pots for this project. And that means you're taking multiple pinch pots, at least three, okay, but you could do more, and you are joining them by slipping and scoring them around. So if I flip these over, this would actually be not the best example because these are not blended together. What sometimes can happen with the joined pinch pots is that they don't stick together in the kiln. This is a better example. So you can see how this is blended in between here. And the way that you can do that is just by laying in a little bit of a coil and spending some time to blend that all together so that it stays together. So when they are joined, they kind of automatically have some sense of unity to them. They're kind of one thing, but the, the tricky part is how to get them to have some variety. So maybe they're glazed a different color. Maybe they have a different texture on them. And the nice thing about any of these pinch pots, depending on how you style them, is that they can be used for functional things. Like this one here would be great for like earrings or something like that, or your spare change or something. Now you could also take your pinch pots and flip them over and make them not functional. And I'm gonna show you lots of pictures of other students work for this project to give you ideas. But let's go ahead and get started with clay. I'm gonna set these examples aside. Now if you want your pinch pots to be the same size, I would suggest starting with at least three balls of clay that are the same size. And you guys know how to make a pinch pot, right? Thumb goes in the middle, fingers stay flat, and we're pinching and turning all the way around. Now we wanna make them even, not too thick, not too thin. If they're too thick, they're gonna blow up. If they're too thin, they're gonna break. So um, we want them to be somewhere in between. Please don't put two fingers in there. That's gonna make a flat plate. You don't wanna be like this. That's also gonna make a flat plate. So it's one thumb pinching and turning. And you can also kind of pull your thumb up the walls of the pinch pot to you know, help even out the thickness. Now, if you were gonna make three different sizes, say you wanted to make like a small, medium, and large pinch pot, then of course you could start with different size balls of clay when you first start. But if they're all gonna be at the same size, you wanna go ahead and start with three different, um, that are the same size and shape. Now, if you have long fingernails or you want sort of a different shape, let's say you want more of a tall vase shape like this, what you could do is instead of a ball, you could start with more of a uh, cylinder shape and then you can find a tool, the back end of a paintbrush or something, maybe a wooden tool, and kind of force something down inside and then start to open that up, okay? And that's how these were created. So sometimes if you want a taller, skinnier look, you could even take something like this, a dowel, okay, and kind of roll it on the table like that. Or if you're someone who has really long fingernails and your thumbnail just isn't working, um, this is another way to start forming a pinch pot. Now, even though I went ahead and shoved that in, I still have to thin this out a little bit. It's still pretty thick in there. So I would need to spend some time pinching and turning and making sure the bottom's not too thick and making sure the walls are not too thick. So, couple things for this. I wanna show you how to join the pinch pots together. And then I wanna give you some ideas for adding feet to the pinch pots, okay? So, first things first. Let's go ahead and join um, these two pinch pots together. So if I was gonna stick them together, obviously, you guys remember, you need some slip. So you would need some slip. They live in these little jars. You could use a fork or you could use a needle tool and you've got a scratch and slip and blend. So back and forth, cross hatch. You could do this with a fork as well to make it go a little faster. We're gonna scratch, 
we're going to slip, okay, we're going to put some slip on there on both things that we are attaching. And then we are going to kind of push them together and we're going to blend. Now, I just increased the, the wall thickness of this. So again, be a little careful. We don't want things thicker than this meaty part of our thumb. We don't want things thinner than our pinky, right? Otherwise, we're going to have problems with explosions if they're too thick and pieces breaking off if they're too thin. Now, I'm not going to leave this like this. I still have to blend. So I would need to pick this up and tip it over and take a little bit of that clay and start to pull it back and forth and blend. Now, another thing I could do to help speed up that process is lay in a little coil. I could take a little snake of clay, lay it into that gap. Okay, this clay is kind of soft here for me messing with it, but I could go ahead and use that coil to help me blend. So if you're gonna do joined pinch pots, you need to um, you know, blend them underneath. Again, that first one I showed you that had a bunch of pinch pots wasn't the best example, because if you don't blend the underneath, sometimes in the kiln they'll just pop right apart and when they get bone dry, all right? So remember, score, slip, and blend. And I do need to have three so I could figure out what my third one's gonna be. Um, how could I add texture to this? Well, I could add some pieces up on the top like this. I could press in some stamps around the edges like that. Kind of is up to you. You've got to figure it out. Okay, maybe these are going to be eyes, and then maybe I'm going to have a third one that's like a nose and a mouth or something. I'm not really sure, but that is how you would blend if you're going to join the pinch pots. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how to make feet. So if you wanted to have a pinch pot, that stands up on little feet. There's this sprig that I have, and this sprig is actually really, really cool. This sprig makes feet, and I have these little test um, testers that show you what the feet look like. So if I was to press the clay into that and pop this out, that's what that foot would look like. And I'm missing a couple of them. Um, this one, I think, is this one, so it's kind of squared and then round on the top. Um, this one, I believe, is this one. Okay, so it's a little round lump. This one is really pretty. It has some detail. This is this one. And I think this one is a little smaller. That's that one. So I guess I'm missing this one. This one's a little taller. So again, the way that you would use this one is to take a little bit of clay and, you know, kind of get it nice. Make sure it's not all cracky and weird. And then kind of shape it. You're going to push it down into the foot that you want and make sure that you have some extra. You have some extra here so that you can have something to grab onto and pull this out. Now, don't get the sprig wet. You want it to be nice and dry. See how nice that is? And if you're going to make feet for a pinch pot, you're going to need at least three of them. So I'm going to go ahead and make two more because it has to sit at least like a tripod. So think about like a tripod for a camera, okay, or I don't know, your cell phone, like a tripod, right? Something that sits on three feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and make three little feet that are the same. Again, error on the side of using more clay than you think to push down into the sprig. Okay, push it down in there. Don't get it wet. If it gets too wet, the clay's gonna stick. Okay, so there's my three feet with this really cool sprig. And let's go back to this pinch pot. Let's say I wanna put some feet on the bottom of this. Now I've gotta widen it up a little bit to fit three of them. But that's a really fun way to just kind of elevate a pinch pot. Instead of it having a flat bottom, let's add some interest here um, and put some feet on here. Okay, so I might need to widen this up. I started with a pinch pot that was kind of tall and skinny, but I've got to have room for my little feet. So what I'm going to do is take these sprigs and I'm just going to cut them out, cut out the little feet and kind of shape them and try to make sure they're sort of the same thickness and the same size. Again, that's what that sprig is for. One, two, three. And maybe you make three pinch pots that have all different textures of feet. Maybe that's your variety. I'm not sure what it is for you. 
Okay, now I would need to figure out how they're going to sit on here. By the way, these also make great horns if you're going to make a creature. But see how that could sit like that on the little feet. Now I would have to slip and score these on here and blend them in. But then when I'm done, it could sit up like that. So that's one way to just kind of make your pinch pots look a little bit more exciting, I guess, is to add feet to the bottom. So just real quick, I'm going to go ahead and slip and score these on here. You get the idea, all right? And then I want to show you a couple more tools that can help with that variety. Sometimes it's as easy as shaping three pinch pots that are the same, but then adding, you know, one thing that's kind of the spice, right? The one thing that's the variety, um, even though you've got your unity. So one way I could do that, notice I'm dipping my needle tool in the slip because I've got a slip, slip score and blend. Okay, so I would blend all those on there. Uh, but let's go back to this example. So these three little stamps, I want to show you this tool. It lives in this little container that says cool stamp. And it's kind of hard to get open. It's a little stamp with a wooden handle, but there are different tips to it that have different textures on them. So let's say I made three pinch pots that all looked kind of the same, but I could give them a different button on the front. That's what that's called in ceramics land, or maybe I just made that up. So let's say I like this swirly one. I could push that on there and make a button. And then that button could go right on the front of this cute little tripod pinch pot with these cute little feet. And then I could do one button with this texture and one button with that texture. Boom, I've got three set of three pinch pots that have variety and that is one way to do that with those little button stamps. So I wanted to show you that tool. Another tool, oops, that's my slip lid. Another tool that's pretty good for creating variety is any of the sprigs, but I do like this one, so I wanted to show it to you real quick. This is a, um, a sprig, it's a bigger one, and this is one that I purchased, and it has lots of different leaves on it. So again, if I took a little clay and I pushed it in here on one of the leaves, cut that leaf out, and then let's say my button on the front is, you know, I'd want to cut that out, but you get, you get the idea. Maybe I do this leaf, this leaf, and this leaf. And then I've got this nice kind of fall theme. They've all got unity because they're a similar shape, but then they all have that variety of maybe the different um, sprig or the little button on the front. Now this one didn't get, give me the texture very well, so I would probably go back in and carve that leaf a little bit better. So again, that could be something that pops on the front or and then I could do like a maple leaf and an ivy leaf or whatever. So this one works pretty well. Look through the sprigs. There are several sprigs like that that could give you ideas. Look through the cookie cutters to get ideas. Okay, but this project is really about taking your knowledge of making a pinch pot and elevating that. What can you do so that it's not just a little, you know, frumpy pinch pot on the greenware shelf? Does it have feet? Um, I'm going to get a wet paintbrush and use that to help me smooth. Does it have feet? Does it have a button? Does it have carved in texture? What does it have to make it like a little bit more exciting? And of course, I'm going to keep working on mine here, but I, I honestly like the way that looks. Now, the other thing I could do, you guys, is add a lid. What if I put a little bit of a lid on here? What if I put two little handles on either side? Um, you know, really kind of think outside the pinch pot right? Not think outside the box, box, but think outside the pinch pot. What could I do here? What if I even just put little decorative, you know, handles on both sides? So you got to kind of think about what can I do? Can I join the pinch pots? Now the other thing you could do is think of a theme. So I've shown you some slides, hopefully at this point. If not, I'll be sharing some slides with you. I just want to show you what this looks like. See those little handles? Now that is a pinch pot with some style, okay? See how easy that is to put a little pop out, some handles, some feet, give it some personality, give it some style so that it's not just a frumpy pinch pot, okay? No frumpy pinch pots. 
All right, guys, I'm excited to see what you do with this project. Remember, unity, variety, a set of three at least. You can always make more. You can always join more together. Have fun with this project, and I'll see you later. Bye.